Larry Fink is now over there, BlackRock, their Bitcoin ETF is worth uh, billions of dollars. This could very easily be worth 20 or 30 or 40 billion dollars. And the Bitcoin market cap could easily go from 800 billion to a trillion to 5 trillion to 20 trillion. Bitcoin is money that makes all other money look terrible. And because before Bitcoin, people would say, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, there's no other choice. You know, you're never going to have good money because you'll never get government out of money unless there was some kind of sly workaround. Well, Bitcoin is that sly workaround. You've separated money from state. And people didn't really think that was ever going to be possible. And what we see what happens with private money, with money that's separate from the state. It's not state controlled. And I always say that money existed before the state. Bitcoin separates money from state. Bitcoin kills the Essentially, it's an existential crisis. We were, I think, in the United States, like, people genuinely feel like their, their, their countries and livelihoods are slipping away. And they really need to put down the hat, bury the hatchet, whatever this is. And they, they need to come together and figure out a way because otherwise they're just going to lose it, lose it all. Today, Bitcoin maximalist Max Kaiser provides an update on Bitcoin, the crypto market, and the hidden agenda surrounding BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF. Kaiser believes that BlackRock is playing a much larger role in 2024 than any other institutional investor. While he maintains a bullish price prediction for Bitcoin, he discusses why this situation is unprecedented in history. Kaiser points out a significant problem with the SEC recent approval of the BlackRock Bitcoin spot ETF and warns that a collapse is imminent. Bitcoin is currently trading just below $56,500, up over $14,000 in the past 30 days. Kaiser discusses the collapse of the fiat money system worldwide and notes that the dollar will likely be the last to fall. He suggests that Bitcoin will emerge as a true form of money, unaffected by inflation or government printing. In his latest interview, Kaiser shares his Bitcoin prediction and explains why BlackRock's strategy will lead to an inevitable collapse. You see, the thing about it is for 40 years, you've had a bull market in the bond market. Right, starting in 1982, the when interest rates, the 10-year interest rate and mortgage rates and all these interest rates were, were 16, 17, 18 percent, because under uh, the first years of Reagan, when Paul Volcker was the Fed chairman, they had to wipe out inflation now, wipe inflation now, or win. And Paul Volcker, the Fed chairman before Greenspan, raised rates aggressively to choke inflation now. Uh, that essentially worked, and from those highs achieved in 1981, I believe, was the absolute high in interest rates. Yeah, they've gone down all the way up until 2022. So you're talking about a 40-year period in which in, in which the cost of money, interest rates, keeps getting cheaper. And this has meant that for 40 years, politicians in Washington have been able to um not have to solve problems just rewrap them in a in a bond and and recapitalize and just throw it into the market with a longer maturity day date and a lower coupon rate and kick the can down the road because there was never any moment when although one one interesting exception was under clinton's administration remember when he came on board they staged a bond market collapse in 93. Bond, bonds got hit hard in 93. And that was all managed on Wall Street to scare and to stop Hillary. It was to stop Hillary bond sell-off. And, and and Bill Clinton famously said he wants when he dies, he wants to come back as the bond market. It's the most powerful thing in the world. Right. And then so they won that battle. If you remember the 2008 financial crisis, they uh, they went in front of Congress to, and to seek out a trillion dollar um, package relief package and Congress initially said well you have to give us more than just one a one pager you have to tell us a little bit more about what you're going to do with this 800 900 trillion dollars and then so then so they went back in the Goldman Sachs and those guys went back into, to, into the offices and they and they had a stock market crash they just you can set the dials and create markets go any way you want to that's a topic for another show wow. but you can you know you can just make a crash very easily and they crashed it and then the congress the next day caved in they said okay here's your money i mean that's one thing about the market anyway so to get back to the bond market so so for 40 years the the, the main point being that kind of the lefties got addicted to this idea that you could always just print more money because for 40 years, the global market kept buying American bonds. Right. 
Now in 2022, it changed and it began a period now what you would call a protracted secular bear market in bonds, which means interest rates are going to go up now for a multi-year basis. And so every single year, rates will go higher. Inflation will keep going higher every single year. And, and like in the 1970s, and people will say, it can't go any higher, can it? it? can't go any higher, can it? It'll just go higher and higher and higher. And this is how the American economy collapses. It'll collapse because of a, it's an inflationary collapse, because prices will continue to go up. Insurance continues to go up. You see those videos, I think we talked about it last time, people on YouTube saying, I make X number of dollars yeah. a month, and I, I, my rent is such and such, yeah. and I can't live anymore. So this is a person who's got a degree or an advanced degree. The it's working a, poor. Right, the working poor. So that, that, that demographic will, will more and more and more will fall into the poor poor, the homeless poor. And that's not, there's no, and there's no incentive to stop that because you have a neo-feudal class, people who really are harken back to the days of feudalism, where it's a, a couple of thousand essentially monarchical folks like who have hundreds of billions of dollars mm -hmm. and everyone else is literally hand to mouth subsistence it won't be subsistence farming it'll be subsistence clicking yeah. right you'll be on your in your provision apple product clicking on ads to get a to get a protein pill to survive another hour essentially is, is what the, what we're heading into if the current trend continues you're defunding fiat money because all the fiat money there's like 400 trillion dollars worth of fiat money based products financial products in the world stocks bonds cash you name it, planet Earth is worth about four, $400 trillion. And that's the total addressable market of Bitcoin. So it can literally demonetize fiat money. It can demonetize gold and silver. It can demonetize the bond market. It can demonetize the property market. It can demonetize the, the uh, fossil fuel industry. It could do, it can, it can. Well, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll change, it'll right. change the in energy industry in, in, in a big way. Um, you know, you see property markets are doing poorly around the world in various spots. You know, you see a lot of problems. And I think in part is due to Bitcoin because people are not investing as readily into property as they used to because Bitcoin is a superior form of investment to anything. It's going to outperform every single thing out there. The uh, the exchange traded funds, the ETFs have made now it easier for people at least to get started on Bitcoin. They, they have some problems with those. You know, we can talk about it at some point, but uh, at least it's a way to, if you call your broker and you've got, you know, money markets and some stocks, you can say, well, put, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 into a Bitcoin ETF. And at least you're, you're on the path. If you've held Bitcoin for four years, the minimum of four years, you, no one's lost a penny. Right. So any volatility is within a, a four-year cycle. And within those four years, it's always hitting new highs, number one. And that's if you're looking at price. If you know you're, if you want to take this a step further, don't look at price. Look at hash rate. Look at the computational power that's going into the network. That's always been going up at a 45-degree angle for 12, 13 years. It, demonetizes other forms of money like gold and like fiat money so gold demonetized silver right silver is not used in money as it used to be anymore because gold was kind of a superior form of money so bitcoin is demonetizing gold right gold is not going to ever do well against bitcoin bitcoin will always outperform gold and buy a lot going forward because a lot of people you see this in the etf market the gold etfs and gold See now you're seeing some reallocation out of those gold ETFs into the Bitcoin ETF. You'll see the same thing in the S&P ETFs. All the ETFs are all packages and bundles of various stocks and bonds and commodities will all eventually kind of migrate over to the Bitcoin ETF. And the Bitcoin ETF has already done record breaking numbers and building capital under those ETFs. And Larry Fink is now over there, BlackRock, their Bitcoin ETF is worth uh, billions of dollars just in the first few days and it could very easily be worth 20 or 30 or 40 billion dollars and the bitcoin market cap could easily go from 800 billion to a trillion to 5 trillion to 20 trillion if the total addressable market is 400 trillion so the possible price appreciation would be much higher but you'll do see volatility people are used to the price speculation on stocks and that the hedge fund guy is taking risk and adding liquidity to it. And that's the way they kind of look at that market. But in the Bitcoin world, it's the person who's buying and investing in the computational power that's taking the primary risk to drive the incentive model, that part of the incentive model of the network. And those people have not backed away. They continue uh -huh. to pour money in price up 
but this is the point. No matter what the price is, people are still throwing money at the network. That's my price. That's, that's, that's kind of the point that I'm trying to make here is that price doesn't tell you the story. 